He was born and raised in South Africa. He calls San Antonio his home now. Reverend Andrew Scotsea of University Presbyterian Church. We talked to him, I guess it was maybe about a week ago from South Africa. Now he is home and uh, I, I understand you just got out of quarantine. There was a, a, a 14 day, 10 day quarantine that you went through. Well, Stephen, uh, definitely it's so good to be back home and in San Antonio, and it's especially good to be out of quarantine. Yes, um, <laughs> it's actually an interesting story how we ended up in quarantine. But I think um, I think what really encapsulates our experience is uh, a tweet that a Canadian epidemiologist actually uh, sent out recently. And uh, um, Madhu Pahi, and he reminded us that uh, the COVID-19 is actually people against a viral pandemic, not people against people. Stop racializing variants. Yeah, and I think um, my experience is basically that we should stop racializing variants. And that's what I want to specify. The last time we talked, you were in South Africa right as the Omicron variant was discovered there. And we talked a lot about the fact that, yeah, it was discovered in South Africa, but it has been discovered in other places before that. Yet South Africa was kind of feeling the brunt of the reaction to that entire thing. And, you know, South Africans continue to feel the brunt of the reaction, um, you know, in a country that is still struggling to overcome the past or the injustices of the past. This uh, travel ban against South Africa is absolutely crippling the tourist industry. I think as San Antonians, we can really resonate uh, how much we depend on tourism. And you can just imagine uh, with Christmas uh, just around the corner, uh, people are struggling right now. When we left South Africa uh, last week, Thursday, um, the, the, the airport was absolutely a ghost town. I mean, there were two, three flights leaving uh, actually to the U.S. There was a United flight leaving uh, to New York, and then we took a Delta flight to um, Atlanta. And so those were about the only passengers we saw. Now, Reverend, I know last time we spoke, you mentioned the inequity regarding the access to the vaccine in South Africa. And obviously there are different safety measures that are happening there. How would you describe that transition period like in comparison to South Africa and when you got arrived here in San Antonio? You know, first of all, I'm glad to and very glad to be in San Antonio. I really want to thank um, our leaders. Uh, our Mayor Ron Nuremberg and Judge Wolf for the way they handle the pandemic and is still handling the pandemic. And I, it actually, on a local level, it is very much the same as in South Africa. Let's do the basic right. Let's get people vaccinated. And that is the spirit within South Africa. And um, coming back, I think the, the biggest glitch we experienced was that uh, we came back last Friday. We actually arrived here in San Antonio about 1.30. We went to one of our favorite restaurants and Sunday or Saturday morning, we received an email that we need to be in quarantine for about seven days and undergo a PCR test. So um, we, we gladly do that. But I think there's a little bit about a, a discrepancy uh, in how we handle the CDC and the local health departments. And this is exactly what we saw happened with the Omicron variant, South Africa was able to detect the variant very fast. And here in the United States, we struggle because we have this hodgepodge, uh, hodgepodge of testing uh, between states and local health authorities where South Africa have more a national health testing, which help them deal with the disease, uh, variant in a very efficient way. When you arrived in South Africa and you came from the United States, did you have to quarantine when you were there or did you have to have so many negative tests? I mean, I'm trying to figure out what the difference is when you entered the South Africa and left South Africa compared to, you know, just what you had to go through as far as COVID testing and detection. Well, thank you, Steve, for asking, because I think it comes down to trust. Uh, South African government really trusts countries like the United States because we know how much we depend on countries like the United States and Britain and Canada, where, and we trust the science, we trust the PCR tests. When I came back, um, the US actually did um, recognize the PCR tests and the, the COVID tests of South Africa. But for instance, if I would have flown to, Can uh, to, to Canada, uh, South African and Canadians still struggle. They still have to be in isolation. Canada actually doesn't even recognize 
the South African PCR test. And that shows you, once again, we are people against a pandemic and not people against people. And we should stop racializing variants and, and, and discredit the scientists and the science of other countries. I know one of your biggest messages is that we're in this together. You know, how would you re uh, hit the ground running with letting people know that's the biggest point behind all of this? You know, thank you so much for lifting that up because it is indeed true. We are all in this together. And once again, in South Africa, they make it clear, get vaccinated, wear your mask, uh, disinfect your hands. If each one of us can do what we can and get vaccinated, we can actually face Omicron based on science. If we can get every person in Africa vaccinated, then we all will be healthier for it. We are an interconnected world and we belong to a global family. Andres Kotzea from University Presbyterian Church. Dries, thank you so much for your time. I'm glad you're home. I'm glad you finally get to leave the house now. <laughs> right. Thank you, Steve. Thank you, Jeff. And you have a good Friday night. And thank you for the privilege to be with you. Yeah, take care.